also joined um, the students in Canada. And you can see, uh, I would say, majority of them have uh, read the book, Obasan. And then this book is about the story of the Japanese Canadians' internment experience during World War II. Nagasaki is one of the cities that suffer horrendously from a bomb. And then Nanking, um, also during World War II, is a symbol of the Asian Holocaust. In your recent writing, in the article that I read from, the, from Gently to Nagasaki, you wrote, may I quote, I did not know, dear tree, that on the way to Nagasaki, we will be stopped at Nanking, stopped and trapped here in the most unholy, the most unbearable of times. Could you um, help us uh, and elaborate more on this? Mm -hmm. um, Gently to Nagasaki is the book I'm writing right now. And it is true that when I learned about Nanking through Iris Chang's book, I could not move. I couldn't move beyond that to continue on my road to Nagasaki. So I felt the road to Nagasaki goes through Nanking. And to be trapped there with the people who were there, in order to be able to move beyond this, I thought that there would not be enough tears to be able to move beyond that. So for a long time, as I was writing this, I was trapped in this place. And then I met you um, at the conference and somehow we were able, through the river of tears, to connect. And I think that that is a healing river, the river of tears, which is appropriate. So in my book right now, there is a cherry tree, which is in the backyard here. And the cherry tree tells a story. And the cherry tree story is that in the beginning, the maker made the world for friendship. That's what the world is for. But the food of friendship is the light. And the light is made of love and truth. And if you separate them, then the light grows dim. So in order for friendship to exist, you have to have the truth. But the love has to be very strong or the truth will destroy. So in this story, um, I come to the truth of Nanking, and this is a truth that the world has to know. The children in Japan have to know this. Everybody has to know this, and this is the work you are doing. So I am with you, I am with you, in the telling of the truth. But what is wonderful is the love that exists between us so that it makes the truth possible. If you hated me, um, I would be stuck forever. But because we can reconcile just ourselves, then it makes it possible to keep walking together. And this is what I dream and hope for from the countries that they too will be filled with the river of tears and acknowledge the truth. And then, if there is enough grief, then reconciliation can happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you try to diminish the truth and you say, oh, it wasn't that many people, or you try to make it less than it was, then that's a different kind of truth. The truth that you need to deal with is what you feel. And so I, what I want to say to the children and to the students is don't stay stuck in the anger and the hatred and the pain, but go with that to the place where love is. And it could be with your friends, but 
always hold on to the love and the truth and don't let either of them go. And I think then we can move on because there are so many things in the world that we have to take care of. And we, if we are stuck, we can't do that. So I see your work as a work of great hope. And um, so I'm so thankful to know you and to know the work that you're doing. And I think it will bring hope to many people. Joy, I'm also very thankful that I have the opportunity to connect with you and to share with you with openness. And uh, also, uh, I understand that there are so many Japanese people, no matter outside Japan or inside Japan, they are working to help bring reconciliation and justice to the victims of the Asian Holocaust. And can you share with our students one or two stories of this uh, Japanese people? Well, at that conference in Toronto, I met a couple of them and I know how hard it is for them uh, in Japan because the mood of the people is not to embrace this. It's like the government of Turkey and the people that don't want to deal with the truth of the Armenian Genocide. Unlike Germany, that heard the stories and then the children were able to heal. So, can you remember the name of the man in, um, in southern Japan who lost his job? Masaki? You know? Yeah. Masaki Yoshioki. That's right. I am impressed with his courage. Um, you know, now that I'm 76, I forget. <laughs> and I, I shouldn't forget his name. But because I am communicating with him and he is working hard. He is telling the stories. He is making a difference. He has sent me some copies of essays that his students have written because they have become aware. And um, so that is a small thing, but it is a hopeful thing. And I think the thing about this little light, when it is um, the right thing, then it will not be destroyed. It will not, no matter how many people want to squelch it, it will keep going. Mm -hmm. So there are people like him mm -hmm. um, here and there. Mm -hmm. And there are lots more people that want to stomp on that light. But it will win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just now you also mentioned about like the atmosphere in Japan that's not really embracing, bringing out the truth of this chapter of history. Do you have any particular wish or uh, things that you like to say to the Japanese government, you know, what is your hope for the Japanese government related, you know, in the bringing reconciliation to this chapter of history? I think all we have to do is look at the whole of history and you will see that the stories that are hidden are going to come out. You might as well accept that is what I want to say and respond appropriately. Um, look at Germany. Germany has become a moral leader um, because it is a crime in Germany to deny the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it being a crime in Japan to deny what happened. And, but it isn't. There are still people that are allowed to say these things did not happen or that they're not so big or that it is propaganda or all of these things. So I would like to um, I would like the government of Japan to be more actively engaged uh, in the telling of the truth and in having all the people of Japan know about it. I would like to see movies and monuments and exchanges and storytellings so that the people know there are millions of stories that are not known. And so I think we need to have more of a storytelling time. Some of our students, they may say, oh, you know, we are Canadians. And uh, Asian Holocaust happened during World War II in Asia. So what does it to do with us Canadian students? What would you say to them? I would say that there is a voice somewhere that speaks to us. And there may be some people who are drawn to Africa, some people who who hear the voice that calls them. So one has to say, what is the voice that is calling me? 
does it have anything to do with my ancestry? I did not choose to be born of Japanese ancestry. But in my experience as a Japanese Canadian, the, the identity was forced on me and I could not deny it. So even if I would like to say, no, no, I am not Japanese, which I did almost all my life, still, that is the way other people see me. So that is a mirror. And so I think if you are born, you, we are part of society, and how people reflect on you cannot be denied. So I cannot deny my Japanese ancestry. I would be more comfortable if I could, but I cannot. Mm -hmm. um, so I will accept that. And it comes with a burden. It's a heavy burden. I did not want this burden. If as a child I would do anything except be Japanese. But this is where I'm planted. This is my pot. So with this burden, I have a responsibility. So I will use that. And now I can say, I am grateful for the burden because it gives me an opportunity to be friends with you, for example, because of that identity that I did not want. But now I can find it as a new identity because we are together. So we have gone beyond that identity. But if like uh, other Canadian students, I mean, like say, for example, if they're Caucasian, then they will say, what does this chapter of history has to do with me? So what will you say to them? I would say that where there is suffering, where we experience the suffering of anybody, we are drawn by that. That becomes part of us. We are hooked by that. There was huge suffering back then. There is huge suffering today. Some people are called to the huge suffering today, and they be that becomes their main identity. So if a person says, I am not connected to that suffering, that is not true, because all human suffering connects us. But it may be that your work is this other kind of suffering. So I would say, I am connected to all the suffering. I'm connected to the suffering in Nagasaki too. It is huge. And so with the comfort women, that suffering, I'm connected to that too. And so suffering connects us. Today, the students uh, come to attend this uh, International Human Rights Days conference uh, to learn. They have already gained some understanding of the Asian Holocaust. Oh, and also they come here to learn to become a socially responsible global citizen. Do you have any um, expectation or any suggestions that you would like to share with our students? Well, I think the thing is that I, I have a faith, I guess, a belief that um, the truth cannot be hidden. Everybody knows it at some level in themselves, what the truths are. And when we connect our, what is known within us with what we hear, if there is a connection, then I think there is integrity and there is health. So I think that that time is coming. So the more people know and hear and have courage, then the healthier we will become and the more hope there will be for what counts for me is the one-to-one -one meeting with people, whoever they are. And for the students, and I would say, if you are Chinese students with Chinese background or Canadian students, meet the ones from Japan and become friends and tell your stories. So I think it's the face-to-face -face that makes the difference. Thank you very much, Joy. I really, really appreciate the friendship that you me have too. granted me. And then I really appreciate all the uh, openness in our sharing. I'm so proud to say that probably this is one of the little examples between you and me, right? Yeah. That can demonstrate to people that yeah. we can work together. And I hope that Nanking or the um, all the traumas in Nanking will not become one of the roots in dividing the people of Japan and China and will not divide the people of Japanese descent or Chinese descent. I, I just echo with you my gratitude for our friendship. I am so grateful for that. Um, and I think it is your openness 
uh, that has made it possible and um, and I think that that openness is possible for all of us that we can just open and be friends that it is not just the Chinese and the Japanese we're talking about but all those countries um, Korea and actually every country that was that suffered under Japanese occupation um, that there be the truth telling the truth hearing and the reconciliation so perhaps we can expand our friendship and include others and hear all those stories thank you very, thank very you. much thank, thank you, you.